Hello guys, this is Paul McWhorter with TopTechBoy.com and we're here today with episode number 28 in our incredible new tutorial series where you're unleashing the power of your Raspberry Pi Pico W. What I'm going to need you to do is pour yourself a nice tall glass of ice cold coffee. That would be straight up black coffee poured over ice, no sugar, no sweeteners, none needed. And as you're pouring your coffee, as always, I want to give a shout out to our friends over at Sunfounder. Sunfounder is actually sponsoring this most excellent series of video lessons. And in this class, we will be using the Sunfounder Kepler kit for Raspberry Pi Pico W. <clears throat> now, most of you guys probably already have your gear, but if you don't, take a look down in the description. There is a link over to Amazon and you can hop on over there and get your kit. And believe me, your life and my life are going to be a whole lot easier if we are working on identical hardware. But enough of this shameless self-promotion. Let's talk about what I am going to teach you today. And I'm actually very excited about today's lesson because I am going to show you how to hook your Raspberry Pi Pico W up to Wi-Fi. And in fact, we're going to go all the way to creating a very simple client server relationship between the Raspberry Pi Pico W and your PC. And so you can connect and control your Raspberry Pi Pico W over Wi-Fi. Sound pretty cool? I hope you enjoyed hope you enjoyed taking today's lesson as much as I enjoyed making it. Okay. So at the highest level, what we are trying to do is we are trying to connect the Raspberry Pi Pico W to your PC over Wi-Fi. But then what we're going to do is we are going to create a very simple client server relationship between the PC and the Raspberry Pi Pico W over Wi-Fi. <clears throat> now, in order for this lesson to make sense, before I jump in and start coding, we've got to kind of understand what a client-server relationship is. There are two computers. One is the server and one is the client. And the way that I like to describe this and the way I kind of keep it straight in my mind is I like to think of McDonald's. And there is a person, a cashier at McDonald's, and that person is what? serving. They are serving you whatever you ask for. And in that case, the person that is working at McDonald's, they are the server. You as the person coming in, you are the what? You are the client. You walk up to the server, you tell them what, what you want, and then they give you what you want. So you place the order and they fulfill the order. You are the client they are the server. Okay. Now also what you can see is that one server <clears throat> at McDonald's, that one cashier at McDonald's can have lots of customers. Joe can come in and ask for a hamburger. If Joe asks for a hamburger, a hamburger is given to Joe. If Susan asks for fries, then fries are given to Susan. So you have one server, but you can have lots of different clients and those different clients can be asking for different things. But the server, if they're good, and if they're working correctly, should always give the right order to the entity that ordered it, should give the right order to the right client. <clears throat> and the computers work the same way. Okay, so in a client-server relationship between your PC and the Raspberry Pi Pico W, who is the client and who is the server? Now, a lot of times intuitively we don't get this right because we think of at work, maybe there's a server and the server is the big computer and I have just a little desktop computer. So, so the client is the, the little rinky dink computer and the server is the big massive computer, but it's not about size. It's about who's making requests and who is serving up the data. And in this case, our PC is going to be the client and the Raspberry Pi Pico W is going to be the server because the server is there to do something. Maybe the server is there to control the position of a servo or control a motor or make a temperature measurement or make a pressure measurement or send you GPS coordinates. But usually the PC is going to send a request to the Pico W and then the Pico W 
you is going to respond with either that action that was requested or is going to respond with the data that is requested. Maybe a measurement would be made and the data is going to be returned. Now, also what you can see is, is that with one Raspberry Pi Pico W, you could have different PCs on your network asking for different things. And that Pico W will be able to serve up to most multiple clients what it is that they ask for. Okay, enough of this introductory banter. Let's jump in and see if we can get this thing going. First of all, the circuit, let me get out of your way. Your circuit today is going to be most simple. We've just got a bare, dare I say, naked Raspberry Pi Pico W with the, uh, with the uh, USB cable connected in. And so that's good. And now we can come over and we can fire up Thonny. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by working on, I'm going to start by working on the server side. And so if you can see back here behind me, I'm going to come down here and I am going to connect up the, to the Pico W and you can see that it's on COM7. So I'm going to connect up to it. And then let's see, uh, let's see, that was not real happy that time. Let's see. Let me try unplugging it and plugging it back in. I might have had another window open connected up to that one. So that could have been the, yeah, okay. I've got another window open and it was already connected to the Pico W. And that was why we had a momentary glitch, but we're going to power on through this now. Okay, so what is our goal? Our goal is to set up the Pico W as a server. And in order to do that, we're going to have to import some libraries. <clears throat> now, the first library that we are going to need is called Socket. Okay, so when we communicate over Wi-Fi or over Ethernet, in Python, we create a socket and we talk over that socket. OK, kind of think of plugging, you know, plugging a cord into a socket. We're making a connection. And so the server has to connect to that socket and the client has to connect to that socket. And then we're talking over the socket. So we've got to import socket and we always need to import time. Usually before these things are over, we end up using time. Now we need to import net import network because we are going to be creating a little network and we will need some libraries there network work like that. And then also I am going to be you don't you don't do this next step, but I'm going to import secrets. OK, and what secrets? That's the little file that has my Wi-Fi. Uh, name and my Wi-Fi password. And since I don't want to show it to the world, rather than typing it in, I'll be importing it from secrets. But you don't have to do that. You can just type in at the appropriate place. You can type in your password and your Wi-Fi name. And so this is just a little way that I can do this program without showing the world my credentials on my Wi-Fi. OK, so now we need to go ahead and we need to create a Wi-Fi network. So I'm going to call it Wi-Fi. You can call yours whatever you want, but I'm going to call mine Wi-Fi, an object that comes from the library network. And then I'm going to create the method YLAN, or I'm going to use the method YLAN. And then it is network.sta, all uppercase, underscore IF. All right. Now, <clears throat> You normally don't like to do something that you don't really understand, like what is all this sta.if, what are my other options? When you look into it, it's really not very interesting and there's not really any relevant options. It's just know that this command will create your Wi-Fi network. Okay, you don't really put any parameters in at this point. <clears throat> now it's created. Let's go ahead and activate it. So I'm going to say Wi-Fi dot active Wi-Fi dot active uh, and make that true. So we're going to activate it. OK, now what you will want to do. OK, now what you will want to do is connect to your Wi-Fi. So what you're going to do is you're going to say Wi-Fi dot connect 
And what you're going to do is inside of these single quotes, you put your Wi-Fi name. You don't type in the words your Wi-Fi. You top, type in within those quotes whatever your Wi-Fi is called exactly. If it's like a humble house or whatever, you type it in exactly the way it shows up when you try to connect to Wi-Fi. That is your Wi-Fi name. And then what you need to do is you need to put in your Wi-Fi password. Okay, so let's say the way I would do this would be, let's say that my uh, Wi-Fi is called uh, PJM House. I would call it that, and then my password is PJM, real secure password there. Okay, but this isn't my password, but that's what it looks like when you do it. Okay, but that's what you're going to do. But what I'm going to do, because I don't want to show you everything, about this. I'm going to do it this way. I'm going to do Wi-Fi.connect and then I'm going to do secrets.ssid that I'd saved there and secrets.password. And for this way to work for you, you would have to create this uh, secrets file up here. Okay, so now we have requested a connection. So I'm telling my Wi-Fi to go out, my Wi-Fi object to go out and create, connect to my Wi-Fi network in my house. But this could be fast or this could be slow. And if you just jump to the next step, half the time it's going to work and half the time it's not going to work. <clears throat> and then when it doesn't work, you'll put in a delay and it works until it doesn't work. And then you put in a longer delay because sometimes it takes long and sometimes it takes short to connect to your Wi-Fi, depending on how busy your Wi-Fi is and what your Wi-Fi is doing. And so what we want to do here is we want to kind of put a little snag where we stop and wait until the connection is made. And the way I'm going to do that is I am going to, well, first of all, I'm going to go ahead and uh, yeah, I'm going to, I'm just going to go ahead and say, uh, while, while Wi-Fi dot is connected like that equal, equal false. So this is saying while you're not connected yet to Wi-Fi, then what do you want to do? You want to just print and you want to print waiting for connection. So the person sees that it might hang here. It might go by so fast you don't even see this, or it might hang here for a few seconds, but at least you can kind of see where you are in the program. And then we'll go ahead and we'll just do a time dot sleep, sleep of one second. And so what we'll do is we'll try every one second to see if it's connected uh, or not. And then when it is connected, then we will just drop out of that while loop and we will commence with the rest of the program. Now what we are going to do <clears throat> is we are going to do the configuration. So we're going to say Wi-Fi info is equal to Wi-Fi dot if config and you know if you use windows and or linux you have either ip config or if config that goes out and gets your ip address okay well what this is doing is this is sort of requesting an ip address from the server and so what we could do here now is we could just go ahead and say print and we could say print wi-fi dot if i guess what we could print is we could print wi-fi info which we just got like that. Okay, if I'm thinking right, at this point we should be connected to Wi-Fi. We've turned in our credentials and we should have an IP address. <clears throat> okay, <clears throat> could we go ahead and try to run this? Maybe we should. Let's see what happens. I will need everyone to hold their breath. Waiting for connection, waiting for connection, waiting for connection. Ah, boom. Okay, most excellent. Let me scoot this up a little bit so it's not behind me. <clears throat> so it looked like it took about four seconds. So if you'd put in a one second delay, this thing would have errored out because it took in this case about four seconds for it got for, for it to get connected to the Wi-Fi. And it has gotten an IP address. And the IP address for me is 192.168.88.23. Okay, these other things you don't really need. These are just various other <clears throat> IP addresses along the chain of the connection. 
but this is the one that you are going to need. And this is the IP address of the server. And you've got to know that. Okay, this, this is the IP address of the server. Now the client IP address, you don't have to really worry about that because the client knows what the IP address is. And when the client sends a request, it sends it its IP address. And then the server sends the response back to that requesting IP address. So you can do all of this without ever really worrying about what the IP address of the client is. The server needs to know its IP address <clears throat> and the client needs to know the server's IP address. And so when I first started fooling with this, I was really confused because I was expecting more symmetry, like the client should know the server's IP address and the server should know the client's IP address. <clears throat> and I was never really sure how to do it. No, everybody needs to know the server's IP address. And then after that, everything else will work out. Okay, now we are in business. So let's think now, I got to do a little bit more bookkeeping here. So I think the program should have stopped already. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I printed that information, <clears throat> but now I need to keep track of what is the ser server IP. Well, that is going to be equal to that Wi-Fi info, and it is going to be the element zero in that array because the IP address we want was the first one in that list of IP addresses. And so this should give us a variable that now has our IP address. <clears throat> now what we need to do is we need to agree on a port for that IP address to talk on. So we're just gonna say server port. And this we can set it to whatever we want to, but I'm gonna set it to 2222. And it doesn't matter what you set it to, it's just everybody needs to be using the same port that's gonna be doing this. So I kind of arbitrarily say 2222. Now, as I'm sending a packet and listening for a packet or sending a packet back, how big is that packet going to be? So I'll just call that buffer size. How big of a packet are we going to be sending back and forth? And I'm going to make that 1,024 bytes like that. Does that sound good? Okay, so now we've got that done. Now what I need to do is I need to go in and I need to create that socket. So I'm going to say U UDP, because that's the communication program protocol that we're using, UDP. And I'm going to say UDP server that I'm going to create is equal to socket, the library that we imported, dot socket, a method in that library. Okay. And then we've got to put in some parameters, socket dot socket dot AF underscore I N E T socket.af.inet. Be careful <clears throat> getting all your uh, uppercase and lowercase business exactly right. And then we are going to set it to socket.sock, socket.sock underscore D G R A M. And I looked into once what all these things mean, but it's kind of like up here where we do the STA. IF. <clears throat> it's not very interesting and there's no real relevant variables that I saw there or in any reason to dig into it. So we use it because this is what makes th makes things work. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I am going to uh, go ahead. I've created this socket, this UDP server that we're going to be talking over this socket called UDP server. But now what I need to do is I've got to connect that UDP ser server to a specific IP address. <coughs> so I do that with UDP server dot what I'm going to dot bind it to. And what am I going to bind it to? I'm going to bind it to a sir. I'm going to bind it to a, I'm going to bind it to a, server IP and I'm going to bind it to a server port. Okay. And what was the server idea ID? <clears throat> well, we got the server ID 
up here from this if config command and then we put it into the variable server IP and we set server port there. So those two things are known. And now let's just run this. It should do, it shouldn't really do anything, but I just want to make sure I didn't crash it. Yeah, nothing crashed. So that's good. I'm just wondering, it's kind of curious that I put this as a tuple. Does that have to be a tuple? You know, those double parentheses or did those just end up in there extraneously? Ah, once a tuple. Okay. Just checking. Just when I was doing that, I thought, well, that's, are those extraneous parentheses? But no, they're needed. Okay. <clears throat> so now I have created a server, a UDP server, and it is associated with an IP and a port. It is ready to go. Okay. <clears throat> so now that it's ready, what does the server at McDonald's do? They sit and what? Wait. They wait for someone to place an order. They are sitting, listening, waiting for someone to ask them for something. So I need to sit and wait for a command. I need to wait for a command. So I'm just going to wait for a message and it is going to be at a certain address. Okay. Now, <clears throat> you see, when I make this command, it's going to return two things. The message, what it's asking for, and the address, who it is. And so it's sort of like if you think of McDonald, <clears throat> McDonald's, I say, I want a hamburger. I'm Joe. Well, the message is I want a hamburger and the address or who you are, it's Joe. Well, here it's like I get a command and then the address is the IP address of the client. It's like you want a hamburger? Who's asking for the hamburger? Well, this IP address is asking for a hamburger. And I'm sorry if I'm going on ad nauseum about this, but when I was trying to figure this out originally, it was kind of confusing to me. So I really want you to understand what we're doing. <clears throat> okay, so this then is going to be uh, the way I, what I do here is I am going to read that and I'm going to read it from where the UDP server server and then what is it going to do it is going to receive recv from and then buffer size okay and buffer size is how big of a message is it's looking from and this is kind of unnerving the first time you see it it says i'm giving a command receive from and you would expect this to be kind of like receive from who <laughs> and it's not it's like you say receive from and you don't say receive from who you say receive from and you just say how big of a message would be coming in but what you got to remember is you're receiving from who from whoever ask because you're the server and joe might come in and ask for something or susie might come in and ask for something but you're you're waiting for a response from whoever the next customer is and so you don't put an ip address here because you don't know who is going to be asking for something but when they ask they will be sending you their IP address like this. <clears throat> okay, so I am sitting here. Now, once I have that message, I need to decode it. So I'm going to say message decoded is equal to message.decode. And then we are going to use the UTF-8 <clears throat> format and it's just whatever you're encoding it in you need to decode it in that so everybody is kind of speak uh, speaking the same language <clears throat> so I got to decode it so it's something that's easy for us to look at <clears throat> excuse me it's easy for us to look at so I now I have the mess I have the decoded message okay and now what I can do is let's just see if I can print the the mess message decoded message decoded is that right yeah okay so now we're gonna see if we can get <coughs> we're going to see if we can now get a command from the PC 
What are we writing this on? All of this is down there on the Raspberry Pi Pico W. Let's run it and just make sure that it runs. Yep, we got that. And now why did it hang? It's sitting and listening, waiting for an order. No one's placing an order, so it's going to wait. How long will it wait? As long as it takes. Okay, so it's sitting there waiting, but we'll go ahead and kill the program. And now let's come over and I'm going to say a new program. Okay. And this new program, you can't see. I'll go tiny mode. I'll go munchkin mode. And now I'm just going to connect to local Python 3. So it's very important for you to see now that I'm no longer connected to the Raspberry Pi Pico W. What am I doing? I am getting out of Munchkin mode. Okay, what am I doing? I'm now writing a program on the PC. And I probably should save this one before I go too much further. So let's come back and connect here again. And hopefully it'll connect. Yeah, now I will say this as save as on the Raspberry Pi, <coughs> my server.py like that. Okay, so now that's my server.py. And now this I'm going to disconnect from the Pico and go back to my PC, my local. Okay, does that make sense? I'm going back to my local. And now I should probably go ahead and save this. So I'm going to save this as, let's call this my client.py. Okay, so now I've got my server. Now I'm going to try to get my client. So the simplest the simplest uh, thing that I can do here is to just connect to that socket and then send a command. So I'm going to need to import socket like that. And now I've got to tell it what the server address is. I got to tell it what the server address is. Okay. And uh, I got to tell it the server address and the port. And how do I know that? Well, I got that from the previous thing. So it was 168 for me dot or 192 dot 168.88.15 or was it 23? I'll go back and check it in a minute. Okay. So that's my IP address of the server, not my PC of the server of the Raspberry Pi Pico W. And that is going to be at 2222 because that's what we set it on the <clears throat> that's where we set it on the server side so i should probably come back over here again and now this time i am connecting to the raspberry pi pico w let's run this because i didn't really remember what the ip address is for sure yeah okay so it's 192.168.88.23 you get this number and you go type it in over on your client side. Now, this is something that I should set, should have said earlier. Now that I have this IP address, the thing you have to see is if you reboot your computer or re, uh, replug in your Raspberry Pi Zero, the next time it might give it a different IP address, which means that you would need to come in here and then use the different IP address because every time you plug it in on some routers, it might give it a different IP address. So what would be good is to go log on to your router and make this a reserved IP address for the Raspberry Pi Pico W. Now there's a million different routers out there, so I can't tell you how to do it because it's different on every router, but just Google the name of your router and just say set static IP address. And then what you want to do is you want to set this as a static IP address for your Raspberry Pi Pico W or just every time you run the server again, make sure that you have that IP address over here on the client site. So 192.168.88.23, and then that would be helpful to you if you made that a static IP address. That, my friend, is the server address. <clears throat> now, what is the other thing we need to know on this size, side? We need to know the buffer size, the buffer size. And that was equal to 1024. We all need to agree on what we're going to do there. Now I need to create my UDP, not server. I already have a server. This is the UDP client. And that is equal to socket.socket. So, socket, and then socket.af underscore INET. And then comma socket.af. 
<clears throat> these look very similar, I think, to what we did the other one. Uh, sock dot D G R A M like that. Close it. And we should have a client set up now. Okay. All right. Now we don't do all that IP address because again, the only thing the client really needs to know is what the server's IP address is. Okay. And so that is all we need to do there. So it's really pretty easy over on this side. So now let's just go ahead and let's get a command. So I'm going to say CMD is equal to input from the user. And then uh, what is your command like that question mark space close the quote close the input now remember when we read the message we had to decode it so when we send it we have to what encode it so i'm going to say cmd dot encode encoded cmd dot encoded <clears throat> is equal to cmd dot encode and what format did we use? The UTF-8. Close the quote. Close the parentheses. Close the command. All right. Now, we've got this command and it's encoded. What do we do now? We go UDP client dot send to. And then what are we going to send? The CMD encoded that message we just created. And where do we send it to? We send it to the server. Okay, we send it to the server, which we set up up there. And so now we'll put that the server address like that. So now we've sent a command that we got from the keyboard down to the Raspberry Pi Pico W. Okay. Uh, Yeah, so I think I think we should be able to see this. OK, I think we should be able to see this. So now, darn it, I really need <clears throat> I really I really need this in a different window because I want to see them side by side. So I'm going to <clears throat> cut everything that we just did. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to make this. This is our server that we did earlier, right? This is the server side. And then here, I'm going to come in and I'm going to paste. And now this is the client side and this I cooked to local Python. So over here <clears throat> is the client program. <clears throat> and we're going to save this again, save as, and we're going to save it as my client, yes. Okay, so now I've got client here and I've got server here. So now I'm going to kill the server. Okay, I'm sorry. Let's close that. Okay, so here's the server. I'm going to kill the server. Now what you see is this is the one that's connected to the Raspberry Pi Pico W. <clears throat> so I'm going to take that. And I'm going to run it. Okay, it runs. It's got itself an IP address and it's what? It's sitting and waiting for an order. And so now over on the client side that remember this one is running on the PC. This one is running on the PC. I hate it when it tries to resize it to the whole size of the window. Okay, I'm trying to get it where you can see everything relevant. Okay, so now we are going to run the client. The client is running on my PC. Oh, what is that? What is that nonsense? Uh, <clears throat> line four. <clears throat> okay, what is wrong with line four? I probably, ah, that sock dot should be sock underscore like that. Now let's try running it again. And we are going to run the server. And so I need to connect to this. OK, so it is connected to the Raspberry Pi Pico W over the USB cable so I can run the program. So I'm going to come in now and I'm going to start the server. OK, 
and it says waiting, waiting, waiting. That's good, waiting. And then we have an IP address, 192.168.88.23. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to just help us out a little bit here. And after we uh, we bind that uh, and we're waiting, what I'm going to do is I'm going to print, and I'll just say UDP server up and waiting so it's waiting for a command just so that we can see that we got there all right so now let's run this okay UDP server is up and waiting I've got an IP address that IP address is over here okay and so now this is this one uh, this one here is on the PC right if I go back down to munchkin mode you can see that it is you can see that it is the local Python, so that's the PC version. And now I am going to run the PC version. What is your command? I will say go. And then when I send go, boom, giddy up. There it is. It got the command. Okay. Now what might be interesting is what if I came over here and I had it able to do multiple commands. So let's say, or, you know, kind of loop through commands so I could say while true when is true 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 is always true and then these things should be tabbed over want to make sure you can see that yep you can and so those are tabbed over like that and now i will come over here on the listen side and i will say while true while true when is true 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 is always true and then we come down here and we're going to tab these commands over so we've got this uh, yeah, we've got this that we are going to tab and we are going to tab and then we are going to tab like that. Okay, does that make sense? And now this should just be able to kind of run in a loop. So now I'm going to come up. I'm going to start the server. Okay, UDP is up and running. Now I'm going to come and I'm going to start the client. And then what is your command? My command is go. And boom, it got the go command. And then what if I say stop? Okay, got the stop command. What if I said green? Got the green command. Okay, so you see we now have a client that is sending a command to the server and then the server just prints the command. Okay, that's the first step. Okay, so what we got to do is we got to be able to send data and receive it and then send data back and receive it. And so we kind of got the first part of that going. Okay, so you see I've got this message decoded. And what I could also do, uh, let's see, yeah. So what I could also do is I could say, I could make it a little fancier. And what I could say is, uh, I could say message received like that. Okay, message received. <clears throat> and then what I would print is I would print the message that was received, which is message decoded. And then I could say from, like who, who asked for this? Who is asking for this data? And then that could be, Okay, that would be what? That would be, how do we know who asked for it? Well, it told us, right? We got the message and we got who asked for it. So now let's print who asked for it. And that would be address. But remember, it sends us a bunch of stuff we don't care about. So it would be address what? <clears throat> Element zero, like, like that something like this like man never has one man had so much trouble with a set of brackets okay and then i think i still need to close that okay so i'm going to get the address and so this time it'll be a little bit better of a message so let's stop the client let's stop the server let's start the server okay it's up in rating waiting we're going to run the client now Okay, so we're going to send the command go <clears throat> like that. Okay, message received go from 192.168.88.100. That's my PC's IP address at the moment. Okay, we could say stop. 
All right. Now, I could run this program on a different computer that would have an IP address, and both of these could go be, be going back and forth at the same time. <clears throat> and at each time, you would know who placed the order right here. Okay, so that's pretty interesting, but usually when someone asks for something, you want to send something back. And so we'll just show you how to send a command back or send something back. What would really happen is the command would be like temperature or pressure or humidity or something like that. And then the Raspberry Pi Pico W would run and make that measurement, and then it would res uh, send back that data, something like that. But right now we're just trying to get the connections made, so we're not doing that, but we're just going to create a data string now to send back. And so what I'm going to do is I am going to create a data string to send back. Data string is going to be equal to, it is going to be equal to, I'm going to tell it I received you, I received your command, and then what was the command of? I'm going to concatenate that with what? Message, message decoded. Okay, so you see that command that it sent to me, I'm just going to send right back to it. Message decoded. Okay, like that. Okay, so now I've got that data string that I'm going to send back. Well, if I'm going to send that data string back, what do I need to do? I need to encode it. So now I'm going to say data string encoded, and that is going to be equal to data string dot encode. And then remember we are using the, the UTF-8. Close the quote and don't put that nonsense black back slash in. Okay, so now it is encoded. And now what do we do? We do a UDP server dot send to and then data string encoded. And then who do we send it to? Whoever sent it to us. Okay. Remember when this guy asked for something, he sent us his address. So who do we send the who who do we send the response back to? Whoever asked for it, and that's address. Okay, so we don't even have to know who asked for it. We just send it back to whoever asked for it. Or if you cared, you could print out you could print it out. Okay, and uh, let's see. Yeah, I just want to make sure it's always good to make sure that you activate that. Uh, so that looks good. So now I'm going to send something back to it. All right. And now what I'm going to do is this on the client side, <clears throat> on the client side, I sent a command. And now I want to what? I want to wait for a response. And so what I will do here is I will wait for a response and I will be listening. And so now I am going to do a data comma. I don't even know where I am. I'm going to do a data comma address is equal to UDP client dot receive from and who I, who do I want to receive from I just do a uh, buffer size like that okay now again these are kind of disconcerting because you you kind of feel you kind of feel like here can you see that let me a little bit smaller can you, you sort of feel like when you do a receive from you should say who you want to receive from but you see the UDP client the uh, you, you want to kind of how does it know who to receive from well, well what you want to do is you want to look up here and see the UDP client when you created it it was uh, it, you know, it, it, it knows what the server address is, right? We've already sort of set it up. So we sent to the server address. So if we sent to, to the server address, who do we want to read from? It's going to read from that server address because these two now are associated with each other, if that makes sense, okay? So really, it is all just about setting up the IP address of the server, and then everything else kind of takes care of itself. 
So right when we did the send, we sent it to the server address. And so if we had a second server, we would have a second uh, server IP address, and then we could send it to either server. And whichever one we sent to, then we would wait to get back from that one. Okay. And now uh, <clears throat> let's see here. So we've got the data and we've got the address. And now what we would want to do is data decoded, data decoded is equal to data dot decode. And then again, the UTF dash eight like that. Okay. And so now let's print and I'll print message from server message from server and then what was that message it was data dot decode data dot decode and uh, date data decoded that we just set up like that okay so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna stop all the programs we're gonna always run the server first Okay, the server runs, it's up and waiting for a command. We're going to come over now and we are going to run the client and the client. Stop. Okay, run the client. Okay, what is your command? And I'm going to say go. Okay, now ooh, on this side, data string. Where is that line 28? Hopefully that's one that I just put in data string encoded. That is perplexing. That is very perplexing. Let me stop this. <clears throat> it also, it didn't even seem to get the command. So let's try again. So we're gonna run the server. We are going to run the client. We are going to say go like that and it crashes again in line 28 in uh, data string encoded ah uh, uh, st typo hopefully you guys caught that okay that one scared me a little bit because some of these errors can be a little bit tricky to get to the bottom of so it's uh, waiting we ran the server now we are going to run the client and we are going to say go and look at that it says it says message received. The message received was go. It received it from 192, 168, 88, 100, which is my PC. And then the PC over here, it got this message from the server. And what did the server say? I received your command, which was go. So you see, I'm passing data from the server to the client. The client gets the data, it does something, and then it sends. I mean, let me start again. Okay, so the client sends a command to the server. The server gets that command. It does something, and then it sends a response. The server sends a response back to the client. And so I can send data and receive data both ways. And so now, my friend, the world is your oyster because if you can send from the client to the server, and hear it and you can send from the other way then you can do the whole thing and so that really is the way to go back and forth so you see what could you do you could send a command from the client and you could say adjust the position of a servo and then the server could receive that and then the server could adjust the position of the servo. So you see now we've got the complete framework in place in order to make this whole thing work. And so I have quite an exciting homework assignment for you. Guys, last year, last week on those Lejeune patterns, you guys did great. I was surprised how many of you guys figured that out. And it seems like you're having a lot of fun with those types of projects. And so again, this is gonna be a little bit of a challenge to you. Okay, this is gonna be a little bit of a challenge to you. But what we are going to do is we are going to come over here and now we are going to take this away. OK, and we are going to bring in. So what I want you to do now is I want you to do a little project where you actually set up a real uh, client server relationship between your PC 
and your Raspberry Pi Pico W where it actually does something. Okay, now to not leave it so open-ended, I will make the assignment specific so you can see what I did and you can go out and figure out how to do this or you can do something better, something grander, but as a minimum, this is what you need to do. Okay, so what I have here is I have the Raspberry Pi Pico W and I have it hooked up to the OLED display. You could use an LCD display if you wanted to. And then I have the RGB LED, I have the RGB LED, and I have it all hooked together, okay? I'm trying to see if I've got something because I know it's hard to see that on, ah, here it is, my magic, magic lampshade on that, okay, like that. Now, you might be expecting me to plug this USB cable in. If you're expecting me to plug this USB cable in, you would be wrong because even though even with the USB cable in, you're not communicating over the USB cable. You're communicating over Wi-Fi. But when you plug this in, you almost go back and think about the Arduino or think about the earlier stuff where you're talking over that USB cable. We ain't talking over the USB cable. We don't need no stinking USB cable. What do we need? We need a little battery, okay? So now I want you to watch what happens. I'm gonna come in and I've shown you how to use this battery and charger in an earlier lesson. And uh, you, you should remember this. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in and I am going to power this thing up as such, okay? I'm gonna power it up. It takes four or five seconds to boot. And then let's see what happens. Waiting, 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 and boom, look at that. This little guy has a what? This little guy has an IP address. Okay, do you see that? I might have zoomed in too far, it might not. Okay, let me, there it is. So this little guy has an IP address, and what do you see? What do you see? It is free ranging. I am not tied, I am not tied to the desktop, right? You see, it is connected to Wi-Fi and I could walk around the room with it, all right? And did you see it did all of that <coughs> without ever connecting to my PC? It booted, <coughs> it connected to Wi-Fi and it got itself an IP address. <coughs> now this also shows why I love these little OLED displays because you see now just when this thing boots up, it's telling me its IP address. So now if I wanted to go run the client program, I could make sure that I have the right IP address because it is telling me its IP address on the screen there and its port number to boot. But now I will return that to its proper place. And now what we are going to do is we are going to come over to our client program Let's see if I can come over to my client program. Where is that magnificent view? Okay, now here is the view <clears throat> where you can see the screen, you can see the, <clears throat> you can see the screen, you can see the LED, and you can see my client program. And now I'm going to run the client program. I'm gonna to try to run the client program, hopefully. I'm going to run the client program, okay? And let me get a little smaller. And what I have to do is I have to emphasize this is not connected. This is running completely wireless and it's running on a battery. And so we're gonna come back over here and what is it asking me for? What is your command? My command is red. Giddy up, look at that. Look at that magic. Who is the magic man here? Who is the magic man? Look at that. Okay, you see, it's red. Where is my cursor? Okay, there. And what could I also do? I could also come up and say green, like that. Boom, it turned green. Do you see that? It turned green. How amazingly cool is that? Okay, and now what I will do is I can come in and I can say blue, 
Okay, this is like the coolest thing that I've done on this whole series of lessons and the coolest thing in a whole thing. I just love it. This little guy is completely portable. It's giving me information and it's doing what I ask for where the commands are entered from the mothership. And so your homework assignment is to do something at least this neat. Now, maybe you might really be interested in like temperature and humidity. So you might use the little DHT 11 and you might be di uh, displaying uh, temperature and humidity here and you might be measuring it here and then you might be sending it back to your PC and reporting on the temperature and humidity on your PC live and doing all of this over Wi-Fi. Okay guys, man, I hope you're excited about this. I think that this is just really pretty cool. Okay, I'm trying to show you, I'm keep trying to keep my studio as neat as possible. Okay, and I really, 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 really hope that you guys are enjoying taking these lessons as much as I am making them. And if you enjoyed the video, be sure to give us a thumbs up. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. And when you do, make sure you ring that bell to uh, get notifications for our future lessons. And I always, I always want to give a shout out to you guys who are helping me out over at Patreon. I've had a lot of expenses in the studio recently, and you guys that are helping out on Patreon, you guys are keeping me in business, and I really appreciate, appreciate that. And I do, in fact, appreciate every one of you who are taking these lessons and are learning because the world needs more people doing engineering and fewer people sitting around watching silly cat videos. Paul McWhorter with toptechboy.com. I will talk to you guys later. <laughs>